BBC Radio Bristol. John Darvel. Our next guests are shining a light on a very important subject, which is male mental health, and specifically young men. It's something we've talked about a great deal on this programme, but it's really important to hear the story now of Jim and Will. Jim is, Jim Cumson is the chief executive of the Bath-based charity Boys in Mind. I've just won an award for a film they've produced. It's a very personal film, because the film tells the story of Jim's son, Will, and his own struggles and experience with his mental health growing up. And I'm delighted to say both Jim and Will are on the line now. Gents, good afternoon. Hello, pleasure to be here. Good, Good thank you. Thank you so much. Obviously, uh, this is radio, so I'm going to have to ask each of you and use your names so people know who who we're talking about. So um, let's start with with you, Will, if I may, because it's your film, which I watched yesterday afternoon. I've just sent it out on my Twitter feed. It's only seven minutes long, but I was struck with your absolute honesty in that seven minutes. And I was struck by the very clear pain you were feeling. And I use the phrase were. I know, you know, mental health is a lifelong thing like physical health. Where do you think it started for you, Will? Um, Well, I'd probably say that when I was about, maybe when I was 10, 11 ish. and sort of going on from that point, I, I remember sort of having quite a happy childhood. And then, I don't know, things started changing around that sort of time and transitioning into later years of school, I'd say around that time, probably. And um, Do you think there was a, a moment or it was just a sort of a, a point where you look back and went, oh, hang on a minute, I was happy then, I'm not happy now? I, I think probably it was more of a gradual sort of... Um, you wouldn't realise looking back on it. I, I don't know. I mean, sort of growing up, getting older, having sort of uh, more in tune with myself emotionally. I don't know. I think it was a very gradual thing, something that it wouldn't just happen overnight. And I think looking back on it, it'd be hard to sort of pinpoint an exact moment that would lead to, you know, my mental health issues, really. And and this is by no means a way of, of, of any criticism, because I think this is really important. I was struck as a father of four and a father of two boys that you said you were really close to your dad and then after about 10 or 11 or 12 you weren't so close to your dad you did things with your dad and then you you didn't and this is not a criticism this is just the way that it went for you yeah yeah i mean it it was all about communication really i mean it, it it got to a point where you know that for a long time we just didn't really talk and i think you know, that was due to a lot of variables, a lot of reasons, but at, at the base of it, it was the lack of communication that really, um, you know, led to a sort of divide, I guess, yeah. And let me bring you in, Jim, because you're Will's dad, and as I say, I'm a dad. That that hit me as a dad, and it made me think immediately about my son, who's 16, because I thought there was a time where I was I was his hero, and I don't think I'm his hero now, and I wonder whether... He would talk to me. That must have hit you, uh, Jim. Um, yes, um, it did. Um, so much so that I had to take uh, a look at myself and I had to look at she, me as a parent. And actually, it, it, there was a moment where I, I actually, I remember sitting down with Will, with Will and, I, and I said, look, what do I need to do? What do I need to change? Because when we talk about mental health, it's very much about the individual, but it's it's the people around. And there's things I got wrong. And there were things that I, you know, I had to look at myself and say, actually, I didn't do that right. And I need to look that in a different way. And he isn't me. Um, so, yeah, as a parent, it was um, it was tough. But in a positive way, it was the best thing that happened. Because I, mm. not what Will went through, but, um, you know, what come out of it is that I actually have to look at myself and hold my hands up and say, actually, I got that wrong. You know, I didn't do that. And I need to rethink how I communicate. And, and, and I mean, it, it, it's so important, this, isn't it? Because that's the thing that struck me more than anything else from the film. Um, I'll come back to you, Will. Is this communication, but it's also having the words, isn't it? It's being having the words and having the relationship with your dad or a mate or a teacher or somebody, but then also being able to say and having the words to say will what's going on in your head 
Yeah, I'm sorry, is that for me or Will? That's for Will. <laughs> That's for Will. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's always, it's a scary thing to talk about, isn't it? I mean, yeah. because they're, sort of, they're quite real, you know, when, when issues are, are, are real, the real issues, you know, and then the real problems, they're, they're scary to talk about. And to be truly honest with people that, you, you know, you care about and you're with a lot of the time, that's a big step and it's um it's a scary one so you know it's the simplest solution but it's also one of the hardest to to start with i think i suppose also something i i got will from watching you and watching this video is that you were also thinking well actually is this you know is this just normal is this part of growing up you know are these things actually real is this a real thing that's happening to me and is it worth talking about and in reality, it clearly was. But I get a, I get a sense from you that there was an element of doubt as to whether you should talk about this. Well, I think it's amazing what you get used to in life, you know, yes. especially when you don't compare a lot, a lot you know, maybe uh, for many reasons. But you, you get used to what you get used to. And so you, you don't realise how much of a problem it is until you start talking with other people about their experiences. And it makes you go, oh, wow. Uh, I didn't realise how big of a thing this was. So that's why, again, talking with as many different people as possible sort of alerts to these to these problems that you don't even know about. When was your oh, wow moment, Will? When did you have that, oh, this is actually quite serious. This is something I need to explore more. When was your oh, wow moment? Well, I mean, I had a few moments. There were a few attempts... Um, on my life and um, some very serious uh, sit downs with therapists and family. And I think after the first attempts on my life and seeing the reaction of my family and my friends and realizing, oh, okay, this is a bit more extreme maybe than some other situations. I think maybe after those first two attempts, I started, you know, it became a real, you know, I, I realized, wow, yeah, this needs to be, um, definitely addressed and um talked about more and and for you jim as will's dad finding out that your son was feeling these things and was prepared to act in the way that jim has just said sorry the will has just said jim that he acted that must have been well i don't know you tell me um well again it's been it's been a journey but um the way the way we will then sort of went right let's do something about this and it, it wasn't overnight this took a while I, I mean the combination is him talking about it now in such a brilliant articulate and beautiful way an honest way mm -hmm. um I, I, mean, I can't be more proud i mean the fact is that our relationship is you know it's the best it's ever been i mean you know what's come out of a, a really horrific situation um yeah i i, I i'm in awe of the guy really um and i am constantly in awe of what he's been through so um but from that it's something that i had to do it wasn't just will i had mm. to do something different we all had to look at ourselves differently and you know it's about that conversation i know will's mentioned it but what we're trying to do is is create those conversations that people can have and not just talking actually it's listening and listening is crucial that i think is i think uh, and i speak again as a parent here that sometimes we're very good at talking we're not so good at listening and we're not so good at creating an environment where our children can be heard that's i think something i've learned jim as a dad that sometimes you've just got to truly listen um yeah yes yeah. so it's something i'm constantly learning it doesn't stop you no. know it's it it's that it's that thing not just as a parent but as as people in, in society and in communities you know we all we all have a responsibility for each other i feel that you know whether it's somebody struggling and, and as we talk about mental health mental health isn't a negative thing if you're having a great day that's that's mental health yeah. that's good mental so but it's this, really yeah but this sorry. is about environments isn't it i mean ultimately you know if you have a a, a bad environment with an uneven floor and there are no lights on uh, chances are you might sprain your ankle or even indeed break your legs so you have to make the environment safe for your physical health uh, and the same is also as as you've sort of been talking here jim is making the environment safe for mental health as you say celebrating good days and working out why bad days may be bad 
Yeah, and actually it's not always looking at the the problem, it's looking at solutions. So it's so it's you know it's it's we 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 talk a lot trying to problem solve things. Sometimes we just need to find a solution. The problem's there. What can we do to change it? And it's very much trying to look in that changing that positive language and and yeah, listening, listening and listening and listening. Is that something to come back to you now, Will? When you look back, and as your dad has quite rightly said, for everybody, mental health is a work in progress, because much like your physical health, it is as well. But when you look back, is it about wishing or perhaps hoping and perhaps hoping that others have the words and the tools and the, the ability to say some of the things that you wish you could have said that might have helped you earlier? A hundred percent. I mean, there's many times I look back and just thinking, wow, if only, you know, sometimes I just needed a hug. Sometimes I just needed a, a little catch up. You know, I think if it sometimes all you need is just a little catch up, a little, uh, a little notice, a little, oh, I exist. You know, I'm being, uh, you know, people are validating my own opinion. So I think that's, you know, uh, if I had those communication situations more often when I was younger, hundred percent. I think that would have changed a lot of situations. You know, it's the little, the little conversations in life that I truly think make the most difference. And there's so it's, it's so simple in, in some respects, Jim, isn't it? But of course it's also quite hard to do. Yeah. I, I mean, when we, we're talking about um, talking and listening and sometimes, and that is, that is hard to do, especially when you, you, you know, as a parent, you haven't got the answers, or as an individual, you don't know why you're feeling, or it's it's creating that 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 space, that safe space, that place that you can maybe not at that instant, but here's a place I can express how I'm feeling, um, how I can sort of not be isolated. Um, yeah, it's 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 something that doesn't come straight away, but it's the more people. That talk about it and share these these mm. emotional feelings the more that we all relax into it. it becomes a normal thing we do yeah and 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 normalizing it and talking about it means that fathers and sons and young men will feel empowered to do something which i've talked about for years on this program and say i'm not okay and be able to talk about not being okay because it is okay not to be okay isn't it will uh i, I yeah a hundred percent i mean i i think a lot of it comes from it's quite easy to maybe feel embarrassed about these sort of feelings especially as a as a young man you know um there's a lot of uh there's a lot of uh in society there's a lot of things that make you sort of go well no maybe cover up your feelings maybe you know maybe you you shouldn't be as emotional as as you can be you know so i think it's about getting over the embarrassment getting over um you know being worried exactly you know you don't want to don't worry about being a worry that's not it at all people want to help at the end of the day you know it's as simple as that really well, Boys in Mind is a Bath-based charity. Um, I'm, I'm guessing the the web. If you put Boys in Mind in a, a search engine, um, you'll you'll find out all you need to find out, Jim. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I mean, we're we're a, we're a local charity. We don't receive any government funding. We're quite small, but we're building up um, what we're about. We make f- films, podcasts, and blogs, and, and they're free resources for schools. We start from primary schools through yeah. to university. And what we're trying to do is engage young men, well, all, all, all young people, but men particularly, about you know sharing sharing that sharing that space and having that space and talking about it. And what we really want to do, we're, we're youth based as well led, so we have our young people, youth advisors, primary ambassadors, who they decide what the films are going to be about. They decide the podcast. They're involved in the structure of the charity, and it's very much about we prevent suicide. We promote positive mental health and positive images of young men, and we want participation. So young people, children, young people are involved in what we do. Boys in Mind, uh, Bath-based Boys in Mind. Put that into a search engine of your choice. If you follow me on Twitter, at John Darvel, I posted a link to the film, which uh, features um, features Will being very honest about what he went through. Um, Jim and Will uh, Cumson, thank you so much um, for joining us this afternoon on BBC Radio Bristol. Good luck with all the work you do. Thank you.